investigation, the people who are doing investigation can go ahead and do their investigation properly. But your excellency, your statement actually under and there are a lot of things that you have said and you've done. Your actions have proven otherwise than what you have said to your commitment to the fight against corruption. Your Excellency, it's totally disappointing. It's seriously discouraging. It doesn't prove that, you know, it doesn't match the words that you've always said about your commitment to fight corruption in Liberia. Your Excellency, we want to bring to your attention that some of your colleagues in other countries are doing similarly well. are doing extremely well to fight corruption. Your colleague in Malawi, yes, your colleague in Malawi, he, 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 he suspended on the basis of an investigating half, a colleague person in command in Malawi. He said or to dismiss him, but he has power to, uh, to, to withhold tax that's supposed to be assigned to him so that's what he's done it's in any country and those who were accused he asked them to step aside to undergo proper investigation your excellency these are concrete actions that we call for we are not asking you to dismiss if the cause for dismissal let them be let them be dismissed but the right thing, best practice shows that you must, Your Excellency, you need to do something about this. It undermines the fight against corruption. It undermines whatever efforts we are making to make sure that people are held culpable for, for, for allegedly stealing public resources. Your Excellency, your actions are not proven likewise. Your actions are proven seriously different from what you, what you profess. You have said it over and over that you are committed, your administration is committed to the fight against corruption, but yet public integrity institutions do, do not have funding to operate fully according to, to their full capacities. Yet, we talk about commitment to the fight against corruption. When people are accused of corruption, they are treated differently before the, the same law. They are committed, com they are accused of the same crime, but they are treated differently. Your Excellency, these are not good signs. We must right the wrongs. If it happened before, it cannot continue to happen. Doing it all of the time doesn't make it to be right. Your Excellency, we want to bring this to your attention and tell you that we are disappointed and we hope that you're going to re, you know, rethink and do the right thing in the interest of the people. Not few individuals will continue because of their interests, protecting their interests, and then allow the vast majority of the people to languish in abject poverty as a result of corruption. Your Excellency, you must act. That's why we call for. Those are things we wanted to bring to your attention, and we hope that uh, you will listen. If you don't listen directly, indirectly, you will hear these uh, reminders and these things that we bring to your attention so that we can take action. All of these things are done. So that we can build like we must all work together to fight corruption. We must do that. It means that we should listen to each other and take recommendations. That thank you so much. We will take. Uh, we will now go straight there to the lawmakers. We want to say thank you so far for their stance. Uh, they've been asking for performance reports from uh, nominees of the president, either people who have been re-nominated to positions they needed to provide performance report before they can be confirmed to their positions. I mean, it's just validating what we've been calling for on this program. We have asked for, you know, dignity to public service for also add dignity to public service because public service has been seen like a free ride. People just see public service to be a place just to collect salary at the end of the month, but they offer nothing. Because if they were offering something, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be yearning and every day complaining about services. Basic social services, we cannot have them, but yet people are being paid. So these people must account to us. They must be accountable to us. If they are if they are serving us, they must be accountable to, accountable to us. 
So it's good. It's a good thing that the Senate, especially, have been doing a recent asking for performance reports from these leaders so that they can show to us what they have done. But that is going to, you know, they, they are going to in turn ask their under men or those who are the other civil servants to make monthly report to them. Your Excellency, I mean, another thing you need to do, what do you do at cabinet meeting? Let's let the public officials present what they have achieved, PowerPoint, and show their achievement. What, what did you do? What you tax, what you are to do for the next month? I mean, that's what it's supposed to be. We need to do these things so people can be able to show what they are doing. We cannot have people uh, um, at ministerial complex doing working hours, they are at food treatment centers and, and drinking and uh, amusing themselves all in the name of no current in the building. People go to work 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and they leave and work 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, this is wrong. People sign up every morning and they leave the offices, they will not go back to offices. It is wrong. We must hold people accountable. If we are paying them, they must account for the money that we pay them, value for money. That's what we're asking for. So thank you to the lawmakers. I think they have been doing well. So on the issue of elections, elections in you, there is something I want to also look at about campaign financing. But uh, time is not really our friend, usually when we come here. But we will take specific day so that we can talk about campaign financing. So there is a section in uh, on this campaign finance regulations for political parties and candidates. So we're supposed to look at that. Uh, we hope to really, really look at this. Section 8, uh, pro uh, pro prohibition of contributions from anonymous sources, corporations, unions, banks, and abuse of state resources is very important. It's very, very important. If you follow things that happen in Liberia, especially 2023, we're going to elections, there will be a lot of abuse of public resources, state resources. So we need to show, we need to tell the public what need what they need to know about campaign financing, you know, campaign financing. People will, there will be a lot of, in fact, we, 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 we've been seeing it here in Montserrat, we saw it in Montserrat, we saw it in the Lofa, and we know what, what, what's going on around, around other places. So we're going to look at campaign financing, but because of time, we will not go into that. We will have a specific time, like I said, so that we can look at this. But today, we'll take a break. When we come back, we we'll join our guests so that we go over to our discussion. Let's take a break. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, Fumbani Gondwe from Malawi is following this uh, and other colleagues uh, across the world. They are following. Fumbani, good morning. Uh, yes, good morning to you there in Malawi and Kenya, to the guys in Kenya. Malawi, Kenya, Zambia, good morning to all of you. I hope everybody is doing well. All right, like we said, uh, we are back and we're talking about the online followers. If you are following us online, it's, we say to you, welcome, wherever you are, which part of the world you are uh, watching us from, welcome. In studio with us today is Anthony Isaac Nyanti. He is the coordinator of the Advocacy and Legal Advice Center at the Center for Transparency and Accountability. Isaac has come 
on this platform under uh, in two capacities or in more than one capacity. So as it, uh, you are here today as the program officer on the land rights, land rent money rights project. How is Central? Let's begin with that. Thank you again, Senna. Uh, Senna is doing well. <clears throat> uh, as you are aware, we just <laughs> launched our land rights and money research report and uh, borders on the nexus between land rights and mining. Because you cannot be talking about mining and not talk about the rights to land. I also bring you greetings from the the advocates in legal advice center where we coordinate the activities there <clears throat> and our intention is to ensure that you understand we and uh, we want to be grateful to the public because we keep receiving calls from different agencies most recently we've been receiving up connection on our power tent so uh in the coming days we'll be going to the field to do verification and then those cases will be filed in the LCC because that's what we have. And we are also grateful to the LCC. Uh, we filed our case from PIPA. PIPA is the Planned Parenthood Association of Liberia. There was some CSO working group that were involved in some act of corruption within the educational sector. And that case was filed in the LCC. And uh, it was amongst one of the cases that they have uh, filed the Ministry of Justice for prosecution after concluding the fight. So we are doing well there. And uh, we'll be doing our comprehensive report at the close of our second phase. But today we are here to talk about land rights and mining with funding from GIZ. Um, so we received some funding from GIZ to do a project on land rights and mining in three counties, Nimba, Bonk, and of course, Bapolo counties. The intention or the title of it is to ensure that there is, we are working towards sustainable and participatory money for communities. We, according to the, the 10th and 11th editions of the LEITR report, it tells you that, that in the year, the fiscal period 2016 to 2017, um, mining alone accounted for around 60% of resources generated from the extractive sectors. We're talking about something around $53 million that was, that was generated. Money alone contributed to was 60%. And fast forward to 2017, money contributed to was 54% of money generated from the extractive sector. But you will get to understand that despite what money contributes, the people within those sectors continue to live destitute lives with, with nothing being done by state actors and concession here to improve their living conditions. And so our research was premised on the Land Rights Act that was enacted in 2018 that gave rights to community to now own land and how they can own land, community participation, and so on and so forth. And so we, we conducted it in three counties, Nimba, Punk, and Bapalu counties, and we just launched the report officially. We are where we have members of the diplomatic uh state actors like the Environmental Protection Agency, the Ministry of Mines and Energy, the Liberia Land Authority, and other stakeholders within Liberia's mining sector. That was the overarching goal of bringing them on the table to tell them these are the findings from the field based on our research conducted. The three counties, uh, maybe you want to uh, tell the audience why the three counties were selected? Uh, well, first of all, there was facts killed from our previous research about illicit mining in those counties uh, in terms of report and also um availability of rules and proximity to to maneuver because if you are, will have your your working hands you must be able to move to those places where where you can be able to talk to the respondents and be able to speak to the key decision makers in the sector so based on these factors those counties were selected but i'd like to talk about the report itself. Yeah. Uh, so, like I said, in 2018, Liberia enacted the Land Rights and Mining Act that recognized uh, community ownership, the customary land, and it recognizes the fact that when mining companies are going to communities to mine, there must be free, prior, 
and informed consent that speaks to ethic for communities. The intention is to ensure that um, the community is part of the decision-making processes, especially when it comes to the issue of awarding of mining licenses, mm -hmm. class A, B, and C, mm -hmm. class C licenses. As you know, that there are three kinds of licenses, class A, B, and C. And C is strictly reserved for Liberians. It will interest you to know that from our findings that a lot of foreigners are still in water. Uh, uh, the reason is that Liberians who are involved in our sector are not financially capacitated to ensure that they can sustain what they can. First of all, you have to obtain money and licenses from the Ministry of Mines and Energy. And so a Ghanaian man comes to you and gives you some money, you go and obtain the license. And the next time, and you see judges on the water. And, and being able to stop that man from doing those things becomes challenging because the people at the lower level, the, the, the local company, the some of that compromise. Some of the legislators have interest in some of those persons conducting, you know. The mining activities there. Even, even though they are in violation of. Uh, even though they are in violation. Even though, because in Liberia, those land, they have protected them. You cannot want to talk to the legislators and leaving out. Those persons that. Found the, who have preserved and kept and managed it. So, In Liberia, the mining agencies goes from top to bottom. And so that's why you have there is continuous standoff between miners and those persons who are concerned. It must be with the community's involvement. You wouldn't have community tell you that they are part of it. At no point in time were they part of it. You just go to the community, the police see you in the morning, you drive your truck up the place, you are getting involved in money when they ask you, say you are prospecting. So it was about how involved is the community. Even the issue that has to do with um, closure of mines, I report other the issue of the communities, the deep pits. Mm -hmm. These holes are left.
because after the price they understand the contract of the agreement. Mm -hmm. Now to do that, that 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 contract is voidable. The, the, the both parties go into the contract must understand the terms and conditions of the contract mm -hmm. because parties to contract must respect what comes on the contract. So for you to, for you to have a contract be enforceable, mm -hmm. the persons who are contracting must understand the terms at the rural level is not like that. So yeah, it's capacity remains an issue. Even the issue of uh at the ministry of mines and energy, there is something called the MCS portal, mm -hmm. the mining cadastral administration system portal. That portal is managed by a uh, a group at the, the Ministry of Mines and Energy that shows which companies are in which counties mine, the class of lessons they have, how long it is valid for, and so on and so forth. Is it is it functional? Technically, it is, but well, how many persons in those counties where money is taking place has an, an image? So, anybody, any, anybody that goes to the community, you see, once he talks to the county inspector, once he has spoken with the superintendent, you know, that means go to start money. Another thing that is lacking in the community in the money area, we, we find the issue of lack of coordination and motion between agencies responsible mm -hmm. to, to regulate the money sector. Mm -hmm. You find the major of money and energy there. He, has, he doesn't have a coordination with the men that come from the EPA. Mm -hmm. Neither do they have a coordination with the men that come from the Laboral Land Authority. So maybe the men that come from the EPA knows that that agency has not done the environmental assessment. He wants to pull a hole. The member of my energy, the man, sure. that man has no way he's able to do. The member of the LSA, but man, I don't know. So there is a complete it's lack connected. of information and coordination amongst those agencies that are responsible to coordinate the money sector. But on the overall, what it does is that he has a friend of the community. There is serious underdevelopment. There is there is serious lack of any serious project going on in this community. So our project was focused on how do we enhance community participation sure. when it comes to knowledge of the Land Rights Act, when it comes to what communities are entitled to when it comes to agreement that inside. So let's let's uh are there recommendations that were proffered in the report that uh, maybe stakeholders, communities need to understand? So first of all, we need to look at the issue of the bottom-top approach. Mm -hmm. um, because 51% of persons who took to said there is a lack of, or there is weakness when it comes to their leader to negotiate on the behalf. So we go to the community, the, the wouldn't tell you that it is the youth that sits with money company. They will tell you that you chief, you are the clan chief, you know. First of all, you must build the people capacity to understand the issue. Mm -hmm. What does the land right access when it comes to free prior and informed consent? What is the community to benefit? When it comes to you have to lose your farm, you have to lose your land, there should be employment, there should be what are the benefit of the community. The people must, so you must build the capacity. Something that is severely lacking when it comes to the mining sector. That's why we call them, they must create an enabling environment to ensure that all parties, those who are in the sector, those who preserve the sector, mm -hmm. the community can take a part. All right? And we talk about, there is no inclusion when it comes to decision making. The community is completely left out. How can, how can, uh, eighty-one percent of the people you talk to tell you, at no point in time have we sat with anybody to have a meeting that there will be mining activity in our community. So the person you come in the community they're looking at you. As soon as you start, they are ready to, to put up resistance because you've disregarded them. You don't think they have a say in what happens because on the basis that you've already had a conversation with the mayor of them. But those are the people who have kept those men. What's about the contracts that you enter into in showing that there should be schools, there should be roads, there should be clinics, there should be you know roads that will be paved from, from town to town to, to, to even prefer. nothing has been implemented in those communities. These are all you know very concerning matters that the government that need to claim the attention of the government and uh, all of the actors in the land and, and mine sector. Uh then they've lingered for so long, they've been there, they've been the challenge all along, citizen participation at all levels has been serious challenge in our country. 
people would do concessions and the people are not involved, even though the law provides for that and all of those. So what are we going to do after this report has been launched? So what we did, first of all, is that before we went to the field, we had some engagements with some agencies. We had an the field. We had a meeting with the the, the, the director of the Labrador Land Authority, mm -hmm. those are all part of our executive processes. We had a meeting with Honorary Manor Kitty Sue. He's the assistant minister at the Ministry of Mines and Energy. We had a meeting with the, the authority at the time, Mr. Brahma was at the EPA. We met with them, and we are, our intention was to get their buy in when it comes to what are their rules separately when it comes to the mining sector. How do they coordinate? How are they helping to regulate what happens there? How are they ensuring that assessment is done, the impact assessment is conducted, money agencies are, and they inform us that sometimes they are aware about some of the challenges in the sector. Trenches are being used on the water. But hey, they don't even have cars to go into inspection. The major amount of moment, but speaking, you can only one pickup or two pickup, and the issue is cross cutting to two, it takes a lot of time to put them. Sometimes they go. There, and you know, there's put there with us. So the the major man was very clear that we have to have these challenges, but we have logistical like, challenges. So until we told them, even joking, we told them happy, we won't buy us some pickup, so you get increased monitoring and supervision in these countries. Because the intention is to ensure that the communities benefit from their resources that have been extracted. Similar, we have similar information uh, conversation with the EPA, and we have one with the Liberal Land Authority. So we, we sat down with them, we discussed these issues, they, have, they gave their blessing that you go in the field and define So when we launched the report, we, we have called them back to the table. On the day of the launch, the Ministry of Mines was invited, we invited, the EPA was invited, the authority, members of the Dilma Record, because these people are development partners. They've given support for development initiatives. So if these challenges are coming out of the field and government is running by it, they can call the government by the team. So our work is to ensure that when we do the, the, the research, the findings are presented to the stakeholders. CSOs are our invited to the So we present that to them. We expect that based on the recommendations we have, you know, we have we have we have we have we have we have offered, they will add consistently. I mean, uh, like you talked about engaging the parties concerned, including the, the, the Ministry of Mines and Energy, the Environmental Protection Agency, the Land Authority, Liberia Land Authority, and all of those people. The tendency in Liberia is uh, when these kinds of information are, are sent out to partners, especially government, max agencies, commission, and uh, uh, yes, they, they just don't see it defeating or anything to go by. They just put it down and yes, business as usual. So what mechanism are we going to put into place to in ensure that the engagement continues to ensure that uh, there'll be a little bit of money of, let's say, follow-ups to, to have these things so considered? So at Center, our work is not yet to ensure that we, we send reports like we did of recent with the, the president's response to the other CCs. Uh, report to the press conference and stating our data advisor that there's a lip service when it comes to the fire against corruption. Similarly, this is because same we're interested to know you, you you can never because take for example we went to Babu in Bone County. That's a mining area. Illicit, a lot of illicit money taking there. The young people are many on our mind. They are involved in illegal activities. If I as a matter of fact our younger sisters there's high rate of teenage pregnancy because most of the guys who get involved in money are more sadness. They would be done, that's all they do. Okay. So we did that Bamu in Bon, we did that in the town, in Bapulu. We did that Bapa in the yeah. These are areas that mining activities are high. So we went to these places and we saw those things at first hand. And it will even interest you to do that. Even the road that lead to these mining camps are in dilapidated conditions. Okay. What you talk about any other project. So our work 
is to ensure that once the reports have been submitted, we are going to stay close with the partners, with government, to ensure that something is done to ensure the situation at that place at a gradual level gets improved. Because we, we did not use to not money to be wasted. Mm -hmm. So our intention is to ensure that we work along with government to create a needed advocacy to build stakeholders, you know, engagement. That's why we did not yet take the report, conduct the research and, and, and kept the report on our decks. We're getting the findings. We will still sit with them and ask them what has been done when it comes to community involvement. Because 81% of the people spoken spoken to of the the almost five, almost six hundred respondents of the county say they have never sat in the custodian with the people. Another thing uh, that usually happens uh, is the issue about how the partners will receive the the, the, the perceive their reports. Uh, like uh, I give you an instance about our open expenditure initiative, where we bring in citizens together. People believe that it is intended to put the public against their leaders. So how are the partners who you know are involved or whose names are mentioned in this? So report, so how are they receiving the, the information in, captured here? In in good faith because sometimes while we're even conducting this research in these counties, those partners follow, they inform us that they are going to follow. Okay. They follow. Sometimes they went there on their own to do it to, to do in, uh, independent assessment. All right. And more than that. We are the method we use in the field was not just for in the air, we use key informant interviews. Okay, so we have recordings, we have records of that effect. We use a uh, focus group discussion. We spoke the book one of them, we had you know one to one conversation, and we have stats from all of those things. So while we're seeing the report, we are even that they go on, they go on launch that we launched the report. Mm -hmm. We had the, 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 the those stakeholders who are present, we sent. Copy, even though the GSA was present for the, the launch, but we still took the entire uh, uh, attendance of people who were there and gave the GSA. So again, we made up the list. So the stakeholders are part of the entire process. You don't leave them out. You don't make up numbers. And so more than that, it was because of the information they themselves received from those counties that there was a cover up because they showed that we go out and address some of those issues. So I can assure you that if you receive any good faith, they were there, the bill follow up, they themselves check on those issues. And so our report is not is not segmented as a follow report. The program you are listening to is called Integrity Watch, the one hour radio program brought to you by the Center for Transparency and Accountability in Liberia. It is aired every Wednesday on Tooth 96.1 FM. And uh a repeat of the program is on Sunday from 9 to 10. And uh, if you are following us on uh, Facebook, so well, welcome. The program is Integrity Watch, like we said. Uh, please leave your comments and your suggestions on our live feed, and we will consider them or read them out for our guests answering or for our work to be improved. So the number to call to be live on the program in Target Watch is 077 We are talking about lands, right? Uh, land, land and mining rights today uh, on the program in Target Watch. Like we said, Center recently, recently launched the Land Rights and Mining Projects Report, and that research was conducted in three counties, Nimba, Bapulu, and Bong counties, and they were looking at issues concerning the issuance of lessons, issue about, issue about citizens' participation, uh, and other things affecting our sector. So if you want to be on the program this morning, the number to call 077. 0771751620770175162. 0771751620 That's the number to call to be live on the program in Target Watch. It's a one hour radio program brought to you by the Center for Transparency and Accountability in Liberia. It is aired every Wednesday on Tooth 96.1 FM. Attorney Isaac Yanti is our guest today on the program. Isaac is the coordinator of the Advocacy and Legal Advice Center at ILAC. Uh, at Central, but today he is speaking in his capacity as senior program officer on Centers Land Rights and Mining Project. So the, pro the number again 0770175162, 0770175162. That's the number to call to be live on the program. Or leave your comment on our Facebook feed and we're going to read them out for you. 
Okay, as a let's okay. let's uh, go forward. What's next after the launch of the report? So yeah, <clears throat> so the report has been launched. What's next? We intend to to publicize the report mm -hmm. so that the public can have an understanding of what the findings are within the mining sector. We intend to, like I said, continue <coughs> engagement, and we intend to as as part of our recommendations because. Take for example, right now, green applicants mm -hmm. is in Tottenham Burr, I think they're in Tottenham Burr and, and Robert Spoo trying to conduct uh, awareness around this entire issue that speaks to the Land Rights Act. Like I said, many of the persons spoken to will tell us that they've heard about the Land Rights Act. But, but, but what in, when you ask them, let's go further. What do you know that speaks to ethics, the free prior informed consent? Which means that the community must be informed. Your consent must be in a sort. They, they do not do. What they do about 5% free carry interest for the community? In terms of, you know, benefit, they don't know. So our intention is, what's next is to popularize the Land Rights Act. Work with government and other key partners to ensure that the people who are supposed to benefit from these laws knows what the laws require. So how can we work along with government how can we work along with development partners to ensure that we can popularize the Lens Right Act? We can talk about more of community involvement. We can reduce standoff between the communities and the mining companies. We can ensure that there is coordination between, between the more ministries and agencies that are the sector. Because sometimes some of these things seem to have a savage game. All right. Uh, we had a situation somewhere in I think in two more important country where uh, there was an issue between the community and the mining agency because the inspector wanted to do one or two, you know, monetary and he received a call that a lawmaker had interest. All right. That's so why that entire person had to stop. So what can we do to stop this kind of thing? Because as a lawmaker, you represent the interests of your people. So when a mining company comes to your office and say, look, we intend to do mining in Bapu or in poor country, you say, no, I'm going to tell you. We'll talk about the other one later on. Why don't we go to the community? Why don't we talk to the young people, the older people, the community leaders, the traditional leaders? What are the needs of the community? On a scale of purpose, what do they want? They will lose their farms. They will lose the, the water that polluted. You will do mine blast. How do these things, when it affect them, what happens next? And so our issue is, the issues that have come over out in the report and the recommendation is to ensure that not only that government can act, but we can ensure that we can create or we can enhance the people's knowledge on what their, their, their entitlements are when it comes to money. What do they need? Because you see in center, we say, you must ask questions, you must demand for. To ask questions and demand for, you must have knowledge. So next step will be though, how do we build on what they already know? As God will happen, most of them know about the Rights Act. Why can we speak to them? What are the details of those acts? The other regulation. So how can we ensure that there is more participation, more involvement in the community before you go ahead conducting? What how can we ensure that before mining licenses are issued, whether class A, class B, or class C, the community is informed prior to, they are informed during, and even after the world of mining license. These are the issues that comes for us early. There is there is this excuse that usually comes from government, and the government factors about lack of capacity logistics and other things to 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 go about with monitoring and enforcement i mean it, it sounds so lazy because for instance the ministry of education the ministry of education is supposed to do monitoring of schools across, across the, country. the country yeah and in monserrado you you engage them to tell you lack of logistics but in monserrado they don't need logistics to travel To places that they will go, they have nothing about. I mean, these are excuses. I mean, it sounds so lazy. But when these companies come, when these companies come to the country, they pay. So, as part of someone is these negotiating, or there should be like children based on what the company come with. You have the issue managing based on what the company has to offer. For the growth and development of a particular community that will be affected as a result of money. 
So you cannot come and demand the man to pay A, B, C, D. He tapes all of the lawmakers. He goes, he tapes the community, he tapes the traditional leaders and local county authorities. And you think he is still to provide the for you. So, like you said, that's a lazy argument. And that's why you always have the LP trying to deploy in counties where you have money because you the competitors have been completely disregarded. All right, the community have been completely disregarded. And everywhere you go, they will tell you. How can you have majority of the people living in a particular mining and fighting community? Same when I went to when I had to go to Bamu, I got scared. It's almost like an uphill climb. If I the, the car with me read. But you have mining company over there. How did we get to that level? Similar thing happened in Bapolo. It's like when you go in the world, the money camp there, you almost like you, you are going to a ditch. Mm -hmm. And when they, 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 the people in Fuma that as they are passing through, they are spoiling the farms. When the truck is passing through, they pollute their water. But they have absolutely, if I put said, the only thing they see these guys when they pass passing through, the king, they come down the road to get water from the city, of, the city side to drink up there. But there's a complete disregard. For them. When we went there, our intention was not to talk to the community, but to talk to the money agency. They wouldn't show up. Most of them wouldn't show up, unless during the, the previous regional high where our salary came to show up. But most of them wouldn't show up. So if this thing continues, you will continue to find the communities being underdeveloped. When it comes to the recognition effort where there are pit holes in the community, they will remain. They will continue to be death trap. People will continue to get sick because their waters will be polluted. And there will be no effort to ensure that there is an alternative for them to survive. And that's what happened recently in, in, in Cape Mount, the issue of b -Mart. They are the same EPA team there. Because what the people sign up to, they are not doing. And little or nothing is being done by the agencies responsible to recognition. So those are the findings we found over there. And those recommendations that we have proffered in the report, our intention is to ensure that we follow up on it. And we will not put any intention to increase the understanding of what the laws are so that you can be able to ask the questions that you need to ask. I think it's necessary that people, what you don't know is older than you. I mean, like we talk about communities are not considered in agreements, you know, mining, mining companies are in communities. The only concern is to get their, their resources out of those communities and abandon those spaces in the communities uh, uh, living at risk. I, I just, but it just brought me to the point about uh, uh, Yekepa and the, co and the companies that have operated in that particular part of Nimba. Growing up, I heard about Yekepa and I heard about Yekepa all along. Yeah. I, I really, I was eager to go and see how Yekepa was. Yeah, and later time from Yekepa, I just thought Yekepa was uh, just different from New York. And that's what I thought. <laughs> Until I got to Yekepa and I felt so, so discouraged and so disappointed that the Yekepa that I heard about and the things that were extracted from Yekepa to see what it was and even the act to access Yekepa was not an easy thing. It was so, de you know, the roads were deplorable and I didn't believe that Yekepa from Uganda to Yekepa would have been. Uh, uh, and, and, and Sam, there is, there is one thing the report captured in our, our recommendations uh, that speaks to the issue of redress mechanisms. So, a superintendent sits down there. The man guess what he's supposed to get from the company. There are issues with water pollution, farms destroyed, sacrifices. There's, the company is not living up to anything. The question is, where do citizens go to file a formal complaint? With the very superintendent who has been living there with the company. So, the, there is there's no late out in the say money operation. They can file a complaint. And, out of, up, and after all of these policies have been you know, exhausted, then we as CSU can say, look, Community A has filed in a complaint. They have, you know, exhausted all of the regions, mechanisms. So, and so that's why the research sought to ensure 
there's a nexus between land rights and money. How do we ensure we strike a balance between the two? To ensure that whilst money is taking place, the issue of the lands preserved and the community. Let's get your parting comments so that uh, we let go of you. Yeah, so thank you, Sam. Um, like I said, it's always a humbling pleasure being here uh, to provide the needed image to the public. And I'm hoping that we can keep doing this as our role uh, as the the one hour radio program brought to you by the Center for Transparency and Accountability. is uh the of our advocacy and legal